Television shows the moment as it happens, which is the medium's highest value, and it shows what happened or could happen. That's the second most important value. Stories for TV are told with images. Visual storytelling, which is defined as the viewer can understand what the story is about, more or less, with the sound on the television off. There are specific tools that we use to explain stories visually. Take a look. Who are these people? Well, what do you see? We know because of the uniforms they are wearing, they might be firefighters or a rescue team. You know what that is? That's a human detail. How we dress says something about us. Clothes, shoes, hands. What kind of a pen do I use? And what kind of a pen does a politician use? Human details help explain a story visually. And what's the strongest human detail of all? The face. And don't forget, television is a close-up medium. Now, who are these people? They work in Marseille. Well, how do you know? Because you can read it. That's a sign. Signs help explain stories visually. And if you can read French, you get even more information that these are firefighters working for the French Navy. Now, what's that in the background? A flag, the French flag. That's a symbol. Symbols work to explain stories visually. In this image, we have human detail, signs, and symbols. And we know these are French Navy firefighters working in Marseille. Eight seconds, no text. Very efficient. Now, who are these people? Yes, scuba divers. But how do you know? It's a human detail, yes, how they're dressed, but it's also a genre or schema. A schema is the term in human psychology, which is our preconception or expectation of what something looks like. We know scuba divers look like this. Now, visually, every location has a genre or schema. What's the genre of an airport? Well, people getting out of taxis, carrying luggage, waiting in line, going through security, looking at the big board. What's the schema of a hospital? Doctors dressed in white, patients waiting, the emergency room, and so on. When you're on location, try to imagine what the genre or schema of the location is itself. What is the audience's preconception of what it should look like? Shooting these things helps explain the story visually. I'll be home later. Ciao. That's a process. How many steps? Five. One, two, three, four, five. Now, filming processes works extremely well in industrial locations, in an office setting, on a farm, in a factory, to help explain what's going on visually. On location, visualize the process and shoot the steps. In editing, cut the process as it happens logically in sequence. Audiences get it, and it's very efficient in explaining what's happened visually. Icons are defined as the picture that tells the story. 9-11, the fall of the Berlin Wall, the moon landing, and so on. But remember, each location has its own iconic image. The iconic image of San Francisco is the bridge and the cable car. In London, it's Big Ben. In Paris, it's the Eiffel Tower, and so on. But don't limit your thinking to just that. Every location has its own iconic image. What's the iconic image of a farm, an office, a construction site, a factory, a wildlife reserve? Switzerland. Think about it. What's the picture that tells the story? And shoot it. Now, here's my tip for you. The first image of your story, A, and the last image of your story, A, are related. Actually, the last image of your story is A plus. That's A somehow changed, and the change is the story. Here it is, illustrated another way. Now, this is very resonant for audiences. They get it, and be very literal-minded about this. The first image in your story and the last image are related. The last image is the first image changed, and the change is the story. Signs, symbols, human details, processes, genres and schemas, icons, and A and A+, all help your audience understand your story visually.